So I don't want to yell. How's everybody doing? Good. I just, I need 90 seconds. I want to remind you of what an amazing week you've had here. You come back, you come back on Monday and Tuesday with courage and come into that room together and look at the tape. And the tape never lies. The tape tells the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts, but what the truth did for us, it set us free. It set us free, it allowed us to move forward to Wednesday, where we put in some fantastic game plans on three sides of the ball. And when we left here on Wednesday, we set the absolute tone for what this moment means to all of us, correct? Yes, sir. So we came back on Thursday and Friday, we honored the game, and we honored our opponent by preparing in detail on and off the field. And then we came back yesterday, and you left with a clear and concise understanding on why we should be absolutely confident to go out there and play the game we're capable of playing. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Absolutely, because we've had preparation, we've got the experience and leadership, and we've got the trust. Is everybody good with that? Yes, sir. So let's do this. Let's go out and do this. Let's go get the football. Let's take care of the football. Let's play this game with poise, the passion, and the sense of urgency that it deserves, reminding all of us that it entitles us to nothing, but gives us an unbelievable opportunity and chance. It's a different kind of chance this time around. It's a chance of a lifetime. Let's take a knee and go. Get it. Well, that sets the tone, doesn't it? The two-time defending Grey Cup champions. That's their mindset as they get set to meet the Tiger Cats. These two teams split four regular season meetings and only one point separated the two. Montreal outscoring Hamilton 117 to 116. Well, in order for Hamilton to upset the Montreal Alouettes in this one this afternoon, they're going to have to get to the all-time leader in professional football and passing yards. He set that mark in October of this season. Kevin Glenn yesterday said he felt confident. He loves his surroundings. He's ready to go play football. Two and four as a starter, and he will be the guy, even though Marcel Belfe has gone with two quarterbacks in the last five weeks of the season, it'll be Kevin Glenn, unless he's injured. Marcel Belfe's Tiger Cats. Looking for their first postseason victory since 2001. Belfe looking for his first playoff win as a head coach. Well, you've heard from Mark Tressman in the midst of his second three-game losing streak in his tenure as coach of Montreal. He has not, never lost four consecutive games. He said, we'll get the ball, and they will receive the opening kickoff. Montreal Louettes had a player-only meeting. No coaches were invited. Mark Tressman addressed that with his team in the pregame speech. And they looked at the film from the BC Lions game where they lost 43-1, the last game of the regular season, took accountability and got ready to prepare for this game. Very important game in the playoffs. Fourth different return man in four weeks for Montreal. Tim Maypre is back in the Alouette lineup. And Justin Medlock gets set to kick things off. Montreal will go on offense, but big news on defense. Ramon Guzman, a late scratch. Here we go. Eastern semi from the Big O is underway, and it is Maypre. Crashing up to the 35-yard line, a 24-yard return, and Anthony Calvillo leads the Alouette offense onto the field. Broke three Canadian Football League records in 2011. He will have the leading rusher in the CFL in Brandon Whitaker as his lone setback in the backfield. There's the leading receiver in the CFL, over 1,700 yards for Jamel Richardson. And then the offensive line, and we talked about the changes. Jeff Parrott from right tackle to left tackle. Jarrell McCuller, the newcomer at right tackle. Starting lineups brought to you by Rona, proud partner of the Canadian Football League and its eight teams. How do they bounce back after last week? Quick hitch and nothing doing there. Ray Williams smothers the opening play from scrimmage by Montreal. Let's set that cat defense. Well, with the changes on the offensive line, don't be surprised at all to see Luke Molander and Justin Hickman move around to see if they can get Hickman on the matchup they want, whether it be Jeff Parrott on his offside or McCuller, the newcomer. There's Jamal Johnson returning from injury to the linebacking car, and the guy that's going to have the responsibility of Jamel Richardson will be Bo Smith in the secondary. Brian Bratton, no gain. Second and ten. Calvillo to 
throw and looks downfield. Jamel Richardson just out of his reach as he was being tracked by D. Webb. And that matchup we'll be watching all day. Richardson, the leading receiver in the league against D. Webb. At yeah, that time, he got D. Webb on the field. And, and we look to look at this trench warfare between Justin Hickman and Jeff Parrott. Got to see that the Hamilton Tiger Cats early on are going to line Justin Hickman on Parrott to see how he adapts to the other side of the offensive line. Nine two and outs for the Alouettes last week in Vancouver. They open with one here. Sean White's kick. And Thigpen on the return. And he'll get taken down by Darren Diedrich after a 50-yard punt. Three yards on the return. Kevin Glenn is two and four in playoff action. His two wins in 07 as a member of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He will have the former Montreal Alouette and Avon Coburn. A key to success on offense will be establishing Coburn. There is Chris Williams, the outstanding rookie and finalist in that category for the Hamilton Tire Cats. Over 1,000 yards for him. Mark DeWitt has played the back half of the season at center for Marwan Hayes. Not available for this one. Start just outside the 30, and they go to a hitch early, and Marcus Thickpen has a gain up to the 34, about four yards for the Tie Cats on their opening play. Take a look at that Montreal defensive front for John Bowman leads the way. 12 sacks on the season for him up front. No Ramon Guzman at middle linebacker. Bear Woods playing in his first game for the Alouettes. His first, this playoff game. And then in the secondary, the only veteran is Billy Parker at halfback. The rest are newcomers to the lineup other than DeAndre Dix, who's in his second year. Bear Woods with a tackle on the first play. And that pass incomplete. Big Ben was all tied up by Mark Olivier Bruet. Looks for a flag, but none forthcoming. And two and outs to open the game for both offenses. You know, I think Kevin Glenn on that throw was just trying to draw a penalty flag. Well covered the entire receiving core downfield. Mentioned the battle between Avon Coburn and Brandon Whitaker. I really believe that'll be a key in this game. Who can establish that run? Redlock the boot and may pray from his 35. Beats the first man. And up across the 40-yard line, a 7-yard return with the flag. And a 41-yard punt. But a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Ticats will be called for procedure. Montreal with the option of taking another kick. But with pretty good field position, looks like they'll decline. Procedure. Illegal formation, no end. Hamilton. That penalty is declined. First down, Montreal. So, Alouette football, when we return to the Eastern Semi at Olympic Stadium. Well, defense has set the tone in the opening possessions of this game. Alouette's last week in Vancouver, 92 yards passing, 146 net yards in that thrashing. S.J. Green with his first catch between Green and Richardson. 58 regular season grabs against Hamilton. Clearly the offensive strategy at this point early on in the game is to get the ball out of Calvillo's hands quickly. Little play action to Brandon Whitaker, half roll, and then just drop it to S.J. Green. Let him do the rest. And they're trying to give Jeff Parrott and those two tackles a chance to get off the ball and get a little bit of contact early on to get some confidence. That was one-on-one -on -one with Luke Mullender that time. Lions got to Calvillo four times last week with that revamped offensive line. Hamilton with seven sacks in the four games this year. Second and three, Brandon Whitaker. And Whitaker shoots his way for a first down close to midfield. Another way you can help the tackles to get settled in as Mark Tressman clearly is doing. Jeff Parrott's had a great year at right tackle, but this is one way to do it. You bring in a tight end. In this case, it's going to be Kerry Carter to widen that corner a little bit, get some help blocking for the tackles, and then also get the run game involved so those offensive linemen can fire off the ball rather than settle back and try and pass protect. That Hickman-Parrott battle is well underway, as you can see. <laughs> 
Outstanding player, top defensive player with the Tiger Cats, Justin Hickman, tied for the league lead in sacks. Play action big to Whitaker, and some room for Jamal Richardson. So you've just seen the leading rusher in the league, and from the leading passer to the leading receiver, it's a 14-yard pickup. Boy, and the, rele- the leading receiver, Chris, in, in almost every receiver category possible including obviously yards where 1,777 for Jamel Richardson doesn't just lead, but it blows the competition away. And he missed a game with a sprained knee and told us yesterday five games played with a knee brace when it wasn't 100%. And all five had over 100 yards. 14 there, first down, Calpeel looking for S.J. Green, incomplete as the pass sails high. One thing that Marcel Belfay said to me yesterday was that in order for them to have success this afternoon, their defensive backfield is going to have to cover man-to-man and maybe have their best game. And that time, Marcel Young in, in great coverage down the field. Just a nice trail position and patience on S.J. Green. Good move off the line, but look at him recover, stay in that back pocket, and make it a perfect throw from Anthony Calvillo, the only way he could get beat. Ticats have only surrendered 300 yards in a game passing once in the last eight weeks. Second and ten. Calvillo scrambles out of the pocket looking for Brandon London. It's incomplete. And the Alouette drive stalls in Hamilton territory. First of all, Anthony Calvillo looked like he had plenty of time to throw the football here. He uses his legs to bounce out, extend the play. And when he does end up getting outside, he has a lot more time than I believe he thinks he has. Watch him jump outside. Ray Williams is basically the closest guy to him, about 15, 20 yards away. He's got lots of time and just puts that one out of bounds. So Sean White, who was hitting from 53 in warm-up with ease, Will attempt for 49 yards out, as longest of the regular season, 48. Sean White's nailed it. And the top Canadian out of the East gives Montreal a first quarter lead. 49-yarder for Sean White, who had an outstanding season. Alouettes with the lead. Marcus Thigpen and Chris Williams have dropped deep as the Ticats have opted to Except the kickoff. And it will be Thickpen from his 15. Marcus Thickpen gets outside. Mark Tresman talked about corralling Thickpen today. And you know, number 22 will be a focus. Avon Coburn has to be. You now, I finished fourth in the league in rushing. And that with the Hamilton Tiger Cats really going away from him in the last eight games of the regular season. Just 69 carries in the back eight games. He didn't play the last game of the year. They rested him, couldn't improve their position. But in those first nine games, 125 carries, nice average, and was really established early in the season to open up play action for Kevin Glenn. Kevin Houston yet, they go with the sweep to the speedy Chris Williams, who heads upfield, gets to the 40, and has six, voted the fastest player in the Canadian Football League, and the top rookie in the East, Chris Williams. Well, and in tandem with Avon Coburn, this is going to be what they're going to have to lean on, the Hamilton offense, because beyond that, they're pretty young in the receiving court. But the former Montreal Alouette, who Mark Tressman said ran nasty against him during the regular season. Vicious, as a matter of fact, was yeah. the word he used. That got our attention. And Coburn's going to be a key for Hamilton this afternoon, although they haven't gone to him yet. A little surprised, and it's second down. Going out, Coburn this time, pressure's on. And flag down, he gets out of the grasp of Bowman and throws it's up. complete just short of the first down to Dave Stalla. But a flag was flying in that offensive backfield. Dave Stalla is the only returning skilled position player on offense from last year's playoff game for Hamilton. Ketch would make it third and one, so the Alouette's deliberating on the options here. Holding Hamilton, number 67. 
Major foul, roughing the passer, low hit. Montreal, number 48. Five yard offset, automatic first down. Wow, that's the newcomer, Bear Woods, the middle linebacker for Ramon Guzman, who hits Kevin Glenn low after the Diakowski hold. Let's first show you Peter Diakowski here. It's going to be on John Bowman. He's going to try an inside move. Diakowski will hold him right there. There's the hold. Now the hit is low to Kevin Glenn as he tries to keep it alive and is able to do that from Bear Woods down below the knee. Dan Woods playing in his first game. And a flag flies before this play gets off. Even. And I'm guessing Bear Woods is tough. With that handle, <laughs> you better be tough. Out of Troy. University, six foot 245. And up until late yesterday afternoon. Procedure. Hamilton, number 67. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So back-to-back -back infractions against Diakowski. Late yesterday afternoon, Mark Tressman had told us that Ramon Guzman was ready to go and that he might not be able to finish the entire game, but he was going to start in the middle, and we may see Walter Spencer as well. Well, an hour before kickoff, Bear Woods got the call. Here's Glenn throwing the out on first and 15, and the catch is made by Big Bakari Grant, who gets swarmed. 51 tackles on the season for Guzman, who had played the middle for Shea Emery, who was also almost available, tried it in the warm-up. Tim Tibisar, the defensive coordinator, watched the Guzman warm-up. Mark Trestman wasn't convincing yesterday to suggest that Guzman was going to play the whole game. But as it turns out, doesn't even get the start. Second and nine for the Tiger Cats in the shovel inside. And here goes Coburn. And Avon Coburn runs viciously into Alouette territory for a first down. Well, not only does he give you that, that inside run presence on the shovel route here as he's going to come underneath, come off the tackle. But watch the enthusiasm with which he runs. I mean, this is a guy that can be a leader, a real spark plug for the Hamilton offense, whether you give it to him on first down in the run game or in second down, a little shovel like that. He runs with, as Mark Tressman mentioned, he runs vicious. He runs with great leadership. One of those long handoffs they suggested. Now the counter to Thinkpen, and Marcus Thinkpen is away. Another option for Marcel Belfay is to play both Avon Coburn and Marcus Thigpen in the backfield together. 22 to the right, number eight on the left. Now, which one does the Montreal defense key on? A good block on the open field by Avon Coburn and Marcus Thigpen. Just great speed on the outside. That ran the angle and beat Jeff Heck for the touchdown scamper. He had 82 yards rushing in 23 carries and rips off his biggest run of the year in the biggest game. Medlock the extra point. And Hamilton has the lead. Box in the open field, one by Avon Colburn, one by Bakari Grant. Medlock kicks it off and Diamond Ferry back at his 10. And Ferry met and driven back as he reaches the 30-yard line. Running play like that to Thigpen, you need one block, and that has got to be on the leading tackler for the Alouettes. That's going to be Avon Colburn, who's going to get out there in the open field and get a body on Chip Cox, their leading tackler. So he makes that block. That gives Thigpen the chance to bounce outside. Now we need one more down the field for the Hamilton Tiger Cats to get this to the end zone, and he gets that on Paul Waldo from Bakari Grant, his receiver up top. That gets him the corner in that sideline. And then it's goodbye. Remember Mark Tresman yesterday emphasizing what a difference maker Thick Ben could be and that the Alouettes would have to neutralize him. Not on that drive, but now Brandon Whitaker inside. And the ball popped loose. And a scramble down there. And they're waiting to see who's recovered this. Cats think they've got it. Eddie Steele in the midst of it. 
And now Richardson has words. Who does have the football? However this is called, we might get our first challenge of the day. They're calling it second down. And Marcel Belfay wants input from that defensive group that was convinced that football was out. Just a couple yards on the gain. Let's see what happened. Well, first of all, let's see if Brandon Whitaker was down by contact or not. Ball was wow, out before his out. knee, so that is a fumble. So they had to have ruled that Montreal fought and got that ball at the bottom of the pile. Second and long, and Calvillo is dropped by the blitzing linebacker, Mark Heath Knowlton. Last year's top defensive player gets to the quarterback. And it will be third down, a loss of six. And it's the second two and out. It's provided by that Ticat defense. Chris coming from the left of your screen, and he's coming on a delayed blitz, or excuse me, the right of your screen right here. Markeith Noten coming on a delayed blitz, takes a look that his man is blocking and thinks, well, if he's going to block, I might as well go after the quarterback and gets there. John White kicking it, and Chris Williams is back from his 39. And Williams taken down across the 45. Greg Laybourne on the tackle after a 44-yard punt. Well, there was some confusion about whether or not Brandon Whitaker fumbled. Let's have another look and see who comes up with the ball. The ball was out there. Yeah, no question the ball came out before he was down by contact. Then the fight was on. Eddie Steele was in the bottom of the pile with Brandon Whitaker fighting for the football. And here's why there was confusion. He had a great look there. Now, it looks like, to me, Eddie Steele has both hands on the on the tips of the football, but Brandon Whitaker has it against his body. And they ruled it was still Whitaker football. There's Avon Coburn up across the 50-yard line. He has five. Eddie Steele thought that he had recovered that fumble. As it turns out, don't lose a whole bunch of yards because of the sack from Marquise Knowlton, but... A sudden change in a turnover can really grab a lot of momentum. Didn't get it, and no challenge for Marcel Belfay, although I'm not sure you would have seen enough evidence anyway. Second and five. Glenn short drop, long throw, wants Williams, and he drops it. Chris Williams was in behind Billy Parker and couldn't reel it in. Missed opportunity for Hamilton. Absolute perfect throw from Kevin Glenn. Enough air on it for Williams to get underneath that football, and he does. He just tries to run before he has it. That goes right through the bottom of the bucket. And you always wonder, as great a season as Chris Williams has had, how a rookie will respond in a playoff game. Big miss. May pray on the return, and he is forced out near the Alouette bench. And a little scrap. Let's check in with Sarah Oleski on the sidelines. Well, Chris, we see Jamal Johnson playing for the Ticats today, but no Stevie Biggs. He's a healthy scratch, a victim of the ratio. The priority, as soon as Johnson was healthy enough to return, was to get him back on the field, and that meant that somebody had to sit. I asked head coach Marcel Belfay about the decision to make Biggs that player, though. He was their high-profile, highly paid free agent signing last year, and if performance had anything to do with it, he said not at all. Somebody had to come out. It was either going to be Justin Hickman or Biggs, and with the season that Hickman is having, an East Division All-Star tied for the lead in quarterback sacks. The decision was made for it to be Bags. It is only a one-game issue, though. Ryan Hines is expected to be available next week in the East Finals should they make it, which would allow Bags to return. Pressure there from Hickman. And the pass through the hands of Brandon Whitaker as Bo Smith was bearing down on Whitaker. Man, this Alouette offense hasn't got traction yet. Well, it hasn't, and, and Justin Hickman is starting to now figure out the change at tackle and, and where he can maybe take advantage of it. You know, this is a guy who had 13 sacks on the season, tied for the league lead with Odell Willis in Winnipeg, and he's going against Jeff Barrett, as we mentioned, moving from right tackle to left, and the newcomer, Jarrell McCuller. 
And he had pressure big time on Anthony Calvillo on that last play. Second and ten out of a punch formation, and Calvillo drops the football. Loose ball, cats are all over it. They've got it, and it looks like Jamal Johnson. And this time it is a turnover on a fumble as they get heat on Anthony Calvillo. Again, it's a, these delayed blitzes from the linebacking court just to the right of your screen. You're going to see good pressure coming from Jamal Johnson from the backside, the blind side. Jeff Parrott is engaged with Luke Mullinder, the left tackle. He has his man. It's the free linebacker that comes from behind to get to Anthony Calvillo to cause that fumble. First game of the month, Jamal Johnson, the reason they had to make the difficult decision on Stevie Baggs. Johnson back from injury, and they had to get him in the lineup. We back. Let him know, man. See what the Cats do with the turnover straight ahead. Coburn, these are the situations Kevin Glenn emphasized yesterday. Critical for Hamilton to take advantage of opportunities just like this. Well, and Chris, in the regular season, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, who are right now on the brink of the red zone, were the best team in the CFL in the red zone, converting on 76%. Scoring major 76% of the time when they get from the 20 going in where they are right now. They've got to take advantage of sudden change. Second and almost seven from the 20. Glenn stands in. Quarter run for Matt Carter. And Carter. What? Is it Laybourne with the interception? Or are they going to rule him out? Incomplete as it was out of bounds. Well, and just like that, great coverage in the corner from Greg Laybourne. Looked like Carter, who's back in the game after being knocked out in that game in Moncton, not playing since then. This is his first game returning. A good battle, but you can see both players were out of bounds. Yeah, actually, Carter with the catch. Laybourne took it out of his hands. Both out of bounds, and Medlock in after his superb season of kicking field goals. And doesn't miss here on his first of the game from 27 yards out. And a touchdown lead for Marcel Belfay and the Tiger Cats. Hey, after this one. I might buy myself some pout poutine there and watch that second game. That looked pretty good. <laughs> a Montreal staple. Mark Tressman. 48, 24, and 24 in the regular season. 3-0 and in the playoffs. 2-1. and in Grey Cup championships, back to back, looking to win three straight. But they've, in the last two years, played the final one game to the Grey Cup. This year, they've got to go the long way. You know, we've, we spent a lot of time in the last 24 hours talking about what we expected here. You respect what this team has done over the last two, three years under Mark. Tressman's leadership, but that game last week it raised a lot of questions, and Hamilton has raised a lot of questions over their inconsistent performances the last two or three years as well. Well, the Tie Cats have come to play in this East Semi. Big boot by Medlock, and Ferry back at his five. And Diamond Ferry. It's dragged down just short of the 35-yard line. Last week, Anthony Calvillo was pulled early in the third quarter, sacked four times by the BC Lions in a 43-1 pounding. You mentioned the net yards, the passing yards, just 146, a season low for the Montreal Alouettes. You saw the frustration outwardly, something you haven't seen from Anthony Calvillo throughout his career. They had that players-only meeting, and that's happened on many teams. Not many times on this team, not in this decade. And it was the way they did it too, Chris, it was interesting. As a group offensively, each guy stood up and confessed his mistakes in the game so that they could get beyond it. They're struggling here early. Double tight end formation straight ahead. Brandon Whitaker up to the 40-yard line. Alouette's number three ranked rushing the ball against the number eight ranked Ticat defense against the run. 
last game versus Hamilton Corey Chamblin understands the importance of taking Brandon Whitaker at least trying to control Whitaker on first down. Montreal one for five in second down conversion so far. Second and five, Calville to throw. Whitaker's got the catch and the first down. Ray Williams was there. But Brandon Whitaker gives Montreal a fresh set of downs with a 12-yard grab. Four games against Hamilton. Whitaker didn't have a 100-yard rushing game, but his last one was his best. In this case, he's going to be out in the passing game as the third receiver to the wide side of the field and just run that route on Ray Williams, which will be a matchup you can guarantee the Alouettes will go back to if presented with the same defense. Whitaker led the league in rushing, as we've mentioned, but also receiving by a back with 72 catches. Back to Whitaker again, so pretty clear what the Alouettes intent was on this drive. Get number two involved. That's the end of one quarter with the visitors leading by a touchdown. Stats after 15 minutes with the Tiger Cats leading 10-3. Yeah, they're interesting because they look pretty even after the first quarter. The thick pen 50-yard run, really the only difference in the running game between the two teams. But remember that big play that Chris Williams dropped. The deep ball from Kevin Glenn that was right on the money, a play he should have made, or the numbers look a little bit different. Absolutely. Uh, so much focus on Kevin Glenn. Two and four as a playoff performer, but he delivers the ball on the money. That should have been a 50-yard touchdown. You know what's interesting? In the last two playoff games for Kevin Glenn for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, it was 314 passing in the loss last year and 437 yards passing against the BC Lions in 09. So he has put up pretty big numbers even though the Hamilton Tiger Cats haven't won a playoff game since 2001. One Montreal turnover has cost them three. Back to Brandon Whitaker, and they have established Whitaker on this drive, and that's another first down, courtesy of number two. Yeah, and this is the way they can settle it down. Give their tackles a breather. Scott Milenovic can get manageable situations on second down, second and medium, second and short. That opens up the playbook, and it really establishes a physical presence for not only the offensive linemen, for, for Brandon Whitaker as well. It's been their most successful drive because number two's involved. Bratton in motion, first down at the 44. Again, Whitaker straight ahead inside the 40. Marquise Knowlton, the tackle. Whitaker averaging 94 yards from scrimmage in each of the games against Hamilton. That about over 20 yards less than what he averaged against the rest of the league. So Hamilton had some success against Whitaker. They need to have success against him today. And Corey Chamblin loves to play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. So that means the secondary can't help very much on the run. They've got their back turned. Second and five. Calvillo downfield. Ball caught. S.J. Green in a matchup against Marquise Knowlton. And it's a 32-yard gain. Safety Carlos Thomas gets caught a little shallow and can't help out Marquise Knowlton. This is a tough matchup for him on S.J. Green. He comes out of the backfield. He gets a good run on linebacker Marquise Knowlton. Now, Knowlton wants to be in the trail, which he is, because he feels he's going to get over-the-top help. And you can see Carlos Thomas gets caught a little shallow, but what a nice catch. S.J. Green stretching out. Green sixth in the league in receiving, and it's first and goal. A.C. takes off the deck inside the five he did talk about running more today because it's sudden death Luke Mullinder with the tackle just two rushes on the year against the Tiger Cats well during the week he was questioned by the media about maybe bouncing in the pocket a little bit getting rid of it a little early and he tried to Eliminate that question immediately by saying, look, this is a playoffs. If I need to run, I'll run. No Luke, problem. Excuse me, Luke Mullender with the tackle. Second and goal from the four. Galvillo wide open. Bratton the catch. 
but loses his footing. And it'll be third and goal at the two. It's a tough decision here for Mark Tressman. You know it's tempting. And with the success on this drive, they've had running the ball with Brandon Whitaker, it becomes that much more tempting. But conventional wisdom says kick a field goal. Full two yards out, so White on to attempt the nine yard field goal. Ricky Santos is the holder. They take three. And the lead is now four. Back at the big O and back to the sidelines. Here's Sarah. Well, Chris, when the Ticats signed Avon Coburn in the offseason, it wasn't just because he's one of the league's elite running backs. It was also for his veteran leadership. And that was something that Marcel Belfe wanted to impart to the group this week. He asked him to speak to the team about his experiences in the Grey Cup with his two Grey Cup wins with Montreal. It was a move that Coburn said he wasn't totally comfortable with speaking, thinking back to that and just trying to take himself out of the equation and impart his experiences and his input on it. But it was something that he did say that he embraced. Belfay said that he hopes that the young guys took something from it. And we know how important Coburn is to this team. When he doesn't touch the ball at least 10 times in a game, the team is 0-6 so far this season. Must be the first time he's ever been uncomfortable talking. <laughs> yeah. And and ten and two, eight and two, I should say, when he does get the ball ten times or more. So that's how important he is. And that leadership, by the way, last year as a member of the Alouettes, Avon Coburn had 17 carries in the East Final for 163 yards. That's how important he was to that team advancing to the Great Cup last year. Always had his best in the Great Cup game. That was an 11-yard pickup by Perry Grant to the first down. And now Coburn slashing right side first down and into the secondary. And Avon Coburn with a big gain there into Alouette territory. It's a pickup of 22. Our analyst Milt Stiegel in the studio tweeted that before the game, this game comes down to who wins the battle between Avon Coburn and Brandon Whitaker. And they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe after that last Brandon Whitaker series for Montreal. Now it's Avon Coburn's turn and big run for him as see Kevin Glenn get him back in formation properly. time and think pen drops it it's ruled an incompletion hey diggy i don't know how they play without that first round bottle be honest we about to give them a whole six months out but think about it never and shy to <laughs> speak his piece and this was the guy that that was uncomfortable talking <laughs> Different when you're talking to your team, and that's what he did before this game. Said this was a business trip, and he was naturally attired in business wear yesterday. Flag down, this play doesn't get off. Man, it's offside against the Tiger Cats. But I found interesting Mark Tressman talking yesterday about how Coburn sets the physical tone. Offside. Hamilton, number eight. Five-yard penalty remains second down. That's thick pit. When you consider the guy that sets the physical tone for his team is 5'8 and around 200 pounds. Uh, just runs hard and he runs, takes on those tacklers, bounces up quickly. Great enthusiasm. No confusion here. Belton Johnson wants to meet up with Kevin Glenn again. They may be having trouble now with the noise here at Olympic Stadium, and Anthony Calvillo suggested that would be a factor yesterday. They kind of re-huddled up there to make sure everybody's on the same page for second and 15. Screen. And not going anywhere. Snuck by Kit Juana Jones. And it's a loss of one. 
And now a decision for Marcel Belfay. Really pushing the outer limits here. Although his kicker, one of the best, if not the best from long range in Justin Medlock. He will punt this time. Would be a, about a 55 yarder. And Montreal had a wrong personnel on the field and Chip Cox went offside. But is that going to give Marcel Belfay a chance to reconsider here from five yards closer? Absolutely. There's no infraction on the play. Okay. Montreal call a timeout. Okay. So the, that, that was lucky because that timeout had to come from the bench and Mark Tressman just before Chip Cox went offside. They didn't have the right personnel or enough personnel on the field. Didn't want to be susceptible to a fake. Almost gave up field goal opportunity there. Andy Bischoff had to make adjustments to get his personnel on the field. Hold on, hold on. They, uh, they moved the football anyway, even though they said there was no penalty. And now the officials are going to have to get together because they did move the ball up five yards. Hamilton punting anyway, but... Well, I just think, uh, you know, Marcel Belfay assumed it wasn't going anywhere because there was no infraction on the penalty. They moved it up five. You're right, because now it would have been inside of a 50-yard field goal attempt. Well, Kim Murphy was making the announcement. One of the officials wasn't on the same page. And now they've moved it back, or have they? There we go. Now we're going to walk it back five. So the ball back where it was supposed to be at the 47-yard line. So they are passing on a 54-yard attempt. Nothing on, and Medlock wants the corner. May play. Flag, and that'll be 15 on the no yard. So they do not back up the Alouettes after a 35-yard punt. Quiet afternoon for Jeff Parrott, and for the left tackle, that's a good thing. Just 19 yards for Hamilton in the field position change. After the short punt and the penalty against the Tiger Cats for no yards. Moving over to that left side and playing very well. 12 of 16 plays. He's gone head-to-head -head with Justin Hickman. And one pressure early in the first quarter from Justin Hickman causing problems for Anthony Calville. But other than that, a quiet afternoon for 95. Milton Collins, the extra DB with the tackle on that Whitaker gain of four. Second and six. SJ Green to the wide side. Calvillo looked that way and now goes back the other way. Downfield for Brett. He's got it. And he's untouched. So he gets up. And now is pulled down. Working against Bo Smith and Jamal Richardson said yesterday, watch out for 85. He's going to have a good game. Coming off a career year for him. 675 yards. Good blocking up front. Again, Jeff Parrott doing his job, taking Justin Hickman out and around. And then at the other end, the top end of the rope, Bratton comes up. But watch the blocking job by left tackle Jeff Parrott. Justin Hickman takes him wide, takes him way behind Anthony Calvillo. Hickman not a factor. 47 yards to Bratton. And it's a first down Montreal at the Hamilton 30. A pump one way and Calvillo scrambles, throws, and in the corner, pass interference will be called. Bratton came up with it anyway. As he continues the duel with Bo Smith inside the five. It's a term that Mark Tressman likes to use with his receivers and its contested throws. He knows the Hamilton defense. Pass interference. Hamilton number 14. Account is declined. First down. 
The Hamilton defense will play a lot of man-to-man. -man. That's Bo Smith this time, and it's one-on-one -on, -one on number 85, Brian Bratton, at wide receiver. And pretty good coverage. In fact, you can't be even any closer to the receiver than Bo Smith is there, but that's the contested part of the throw. And first and goal from the two. Two big catches by Brian Bratton on the drive, and Brandon Whitaker finishes the drive to put the Owls in front. But two big, big catches in coverage by Brian Bratton. Challenge flags come out prior to the convert. Marcel Belfay's group doesn't think he broke the plane. challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. We will review the play. Well, let's go back and take a look. From the opposite side, Looked like he landed. It looked like he landed right on the goal line. You see the ball come loose, and after the touchdown was signaled, the Ticats get on it. It was almost as if Brandon Whitaker, part of his body went over the line, but the ball didn't. And I think that's what Marcel Belfay saw, because the ball has got to cross the goal line. I think it lands right on the white, right there. Is that him? Is that just him, though? I mean, that you can't. I can't see the ball underneath Brandon Whitaker from that angle on the goal line. Might have to go back to the reverse angle on that, but. One more angle to that touchdown or challenge play. Because there's, there's the ball. Right down on the goal line. back to that reverse angle one more time because I thought it looked to me at that point that the ball had got pushed back behind him. No, you know what? It is on the goal line right there. That's all he had to do. He did get pushed back after that to that's where the ball, that, that's the ball where it flashes behind, yeah. Well, based on that look and where the ball is, they make sure that he has control of the ball there. Then this should count, this should stand. I don't think there's any way in that pile that you could determine whether or not his knee was down anywhere in that prior to the ball crossing the goal line. But that is probably why they're taking a little extra time. We, we've seen the ball break the plane, but again, you're right. If Whitaker's knee was down prior to that, it would not be a touchdown. Looks like we've got a verdict from the command center. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchdown. Well, based on the 
time that it took to make the ruling. You have to say it's a good challenge by Marcel Belfe to take a look at that. If he wins that, he gives his defense a chance down on the goal line. And, and we've seen this year that plenty of goal line stands. It's not an automatic from down there. But a big drive for the Alouettes and a quick one. Four plays, 82 yards. Capped by the Whitaker touchdown. The Canadians that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. A decade-long mission in Afghanistan. Alouettes have the lead. Tiger Cats have thick pen on the return. Up to the 35-yard line. Good first half, and now Kevin Glenn. And the Tiger Cats will look to answer that last scoring drive by Montreal. Boy, those numbers look drastically different. Not for a drop from Chris Williams in the first quarter, but this may be the most important drive so far of the game for Kevin Glenn. A couple of first downs here can give that hope back to his football team. All of a sudden, Montreal's grabbed some momentum. A Brandon Whitaker drive, the Brian Bratton drive. Now it's time for Hamilton to respond. Smith into the game on the offensive line as a tight end as they bulk up. Big to Colbert, the hitch is Thickpin into the traffic and up to the 40 yard line for Marcus Thickpin, taken down by the corner, Paul Waldo. Boy, the Montreal Wets defensively load the line of scrimmage here, and this is a dangerous throw. He gets it to Marcus Thigpen, but there was a lot of traffic around it. Look at the line of scrimmage, and the Alouettes right up there on the line. And that's exactly where they're throwing it, right down the line of scrimmage. I count about seven, eight uh, Montreal Alouette tacklers in the, in the area. And some concern of the bench. One of the key weapons for Hamilton getting attention. Right ankle. And this play doesn't get off. Time count violation. Hamilton number five. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Home field advantage for the Alouettes. You mentioned Anthony Calvillo talking about it and how difficult it'll be for Kevin Glenn to hear the calls coming in his speaker in his helmet from Kahari Jones on the bench. When this crowd get amps up, amped up, and then they also, if they want to make a change to the call on the line of scrimmage, becomes that much more difficult. We've seen a couple of penalties in this first half because of it. Second and or, or two for six and second down conversions, and they're going to be close to one here. That's a big grab by Thigpen, who caught it at about the 45, needed to get beyond the 45 for the first down. So let's check the spot. Clutch throw and catch. And it looks like they may be a chain link or two short. Well, Marcel Belfe said to us, a nice catch by Thigpen in traffic here. But he said to us yesterday that Marcus Thigpen and Chris Williams had not played together for about five games because they knew where they were going to finish in the playoffs. This will be third and about two inches. Close enough, I'm sure, that Marcel Belfe will go ahead and go for it. And with Chris Williams now on the bench getting his ankle taped, that means that Thigpen is going to have to go and play more as a receiver. And it takes away the option offensively of having both him and Avon Coburn in the backfield. So more injuries affecting the decisions made by Belfair. And we've already seen the impact Thick can, can make when he is in the backfield. The 50-yard run, third and inches. And the jumbo team comes on, including... Lunging for the first down. You know, Marcel Belfe was asked a ton about this two quarterback system in the last five games of the regular season. And, you know, basically, it wasn't to set up the possibility of a rotation here in the playoffs. Kevin Glenn has been the starter, will remain the starter. What Marcel Belfe said it was all about was giving Quentin Porter more experience so that if they had to, desperation time either through injury or just that the wheels came right off this offense for the Thai Cats that they did have the option to port it. Fullback Darcy Brown part of the punch formation to the wide side. And Colburn straight ahead. And 
not much there trying to push the pile to the 49. You know, the little things make such a big difference, and that exchange from Kevin Glenn to Avon Coburn wasn't smooth. It caused the timing of this play to be off by just a split second or two, and that's all it takes. Watch how he gets a bit of his arm. It pulls Coburn back a little bit. He has to hesitate, and then by then the hole has disappeared. So passing down, John Bowman comes out. And an extra DP in for Montreal, and Chris Williams is checked back into the Hamilton offense. Kevin Glenn, sidelines, he's got a first down to Matt Carter back for the first time since the game in Moncton where he had that scary injury, a concussion when he was sent head over heels in the game against Calgary. Nice pick up here on the protection for the Ticats to allow Kevin Glenn to take that step and step into this throw good and hard. Belton Johnson on the outside, nice push. He was on Moulton Hopkins to keep him wide, and Glenn has the throwing lane he needs. There were some questions about, well, not sure about Matt Carter. He's only been back for a week and a half. Yeah. Glenn McKay with a broken foot is out. Another reason the ratio problems that have Stevie Bang sideline today. First down, Coburn slashing down to the 50-yard line. Another short gain for Avon Coburn, setting up another second and long for the Tiger Cats. Close game and a tight game between two rivals that have become rivals this year in the four games they played. Discipline will be a key factor. Exactly three minutes left, and now that three-minute warning given to the benches. First half, Eastern Semi. Ankle routine. Second down, Glenn throws. It's caught. Dave Stallard, the former Alouette, with a first down, and he's inside the 30. Sticky gets 21. And another second down conversion by the Ticats on this drive. Career high eight touchdowns for Dave Stalla in the 2011 season. And is there better hands in the CFL than number 88? That ball out high and outside with a lot of heat on it. Stalla pulls it down. Key catch. So inside the 30 yard line. Stella, number four among Canadian receivers this year, and 14 catches in his last two games. First down. Glenn sets up and looks downfield, and it's a touchdown! Bakari Grant in the end zone! A perfect strike for Kevin Glenn, 29 yards. Layered routes across the middle. And you're right, it's a perfect throw, Chris, because Kevin Glenn has time to step up in the pocket. Watch him half roll to his right, step up, step into this throw, and over the shoulder, Bakari Grant, the best catch of his young career. What a great go, grab by the rookie. And that is the first touchdown pass tossed by Kevin Glenn in his last 137 attempts. That drought is over, and the Ticats have regained the lead. You know, back-to-back -back catches from his receiving core, though, when you think of that Stala catch, and then Grant on the touchdown. Both throws, Kevin Glenn was forced through the coverage to throw it to a spot where he has to make it tough on his receiver and hope for the best, and both those receivers came up big for Kevin Glenn. Bakari Grant, you're going to see the layers here. There's one there and then down the seam. The idea here is to put it a bind on the safety, make it tough for him in Jeff Heck back there. He's too late coming out of his backfield. Actually, it was Chip Cox who had rolled back to the safety spot. But he's too late coming out of that back uh, backpedal because of the layered routes. And nice catch by Bakari yeah, Grant. Yeah, Brother side. Robert, the former Edmonton Eskimo. Oh, yeah, all day. Hey, man, I just want to give a shout-out to my baby girl, beautiful Kari Marie. I love you. Give a shout-out to that Kelly Life. Obama all day, baby. We out here. Game time. Turn, baby. Let's go. Marcel Belfay mentioning he's the best blocker among the receivers, but pretty good hands, too, as he showed you there. You remember his big block on the Thigpen 50-yard run in the open field. 
And Medlock the extra point, so the Ticats have regained a four-point lead. John Bowman was shaken up on the Bakari Grant touchdown. Boy, this is a tough catch. I mean, he's got to go over his shoulder. It's high and outside. Now, Glenn has time to really put this where he wants, and he has to put it there because of the trail position from Seth Williams. If he puts that anywhere in the short side shoulder, Williams has a chance at it. It's up over the top, makes it a little tougher on Bakari Grant, but he comes up with it, and Chip Cox just did not have time to get there. Well, there were some much talked about moves in Hamilton this year. Releasing or dealing Arlen Bruce and Maurice Mann, veteran receivers. They liked what they had in the youngsters. Chris Williams, the top rookie in the East, yeah, and the Curry Grant yep, yep. demonstrating his talents on that play. Well, just think about that, Chris. I mean, last year in the playoffs, the Hamilton Tire Cats had DeAndre Cobb in their backfield, Arlan Bruce, Mark Quay, McDaniel, Chris Bauman, and Maurice Mann in the receiving court. The only returning receiver is Dave Stalla. These young receivers, Marcel Belfay felt, had the ability to be able to take another step and win that big playoff game. We'll see. 75-yard touchdown drive, 70 through the year as Kevin Glenn went four for four. Here's May play. And he gets dragged out by the special team tackle leader in the Canadian Football League this year, Mark Beswick. Well, we may get a pitcher's duel today as Calvillo is heated up and Kevin Glenn put his team back on top with that last drive. Well, things have settled down for Calvillo when he got Brandon Whitaker involved. And it was late in that first quarter. And into the second. A couple of big catches by Brian Bratton. Calvillo's got Brandon London loose. First down for London up at the 48-yard line. Jamel Richardson just draws coverage. I mean, wherever he's on the field, whether it's zone or man, you know the Ticat secondary are peeking towards him. He was on the same side there as Brandon London. And the entire secondary for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on that side of the ball, they went right to number 18 and left Brandon London wide open on that sideline. 19 for London. First down, Calvillo under duress. Puts it up. And heavy traffic ball falls incomplete. Richardson, London in the same area. And that drew D. Webb and company as well. I believe Lois Means, the fourth member of that gathering around the football. Yeah, he's the guy who made the hit on London that, that knocks it out of there. But you're right, D. Webb was scrambling to get back. Lois Means with the contact there, and I believe both players run into each other a little bit as S.J. Green came back for the ball. Or excuse me, it was Jamel Richardson. London more of a focus in the Montreal offense with the season-ending injury to Kerry Watkins. A broken leg, second and ten. AC's got time, and that usually means a completion. S.J. Green the catch. Working against Lois Beans. Gary Watkins on the sidelines shows his approval. Well, the receiving course, both teams coming up with big catches and lots of time to throw, and that's got to be a concern for Marcel Belfe and this Hamilton defense because if you start to give A.C. time to throw like this, it's going to be a long afternoon. S.J. Green clears through, has lots of time to go from inside out. Now take a look again. Mullinder against Jeff Parrott. A little bit of help from Brandon Whitaker on the outside. And Justin Hickman nowhere near A.C. A.C. seven of his last eight. Back to throw. This time they got him. Back at the 50-yard line. There's Justin Hickman. But a flag comes down on that high tackle. Yeah, it's going to be a high tackle. And I know what Justin Hickman's argument is. It's going to be that, that he thought the quarterback ducked. And as he went to make the tackle. Major fouls. Roughing the passer. Hamilton number 95. Well, let's see.
stand up position. Jeff Parrott's done a nice job on him so far, but good power rush there. I don't think he's got a case. No, he doesn't. That's that's going to be called every single time. Could have ran through his back and had the sack instead. It's a 15 yard penalty. Extends the drive inside the Hamilton 30. Here comes the heat. They got him this time. Nothing wrong with that. Marcel Young off the corner. And the Ticat fans who have made the trip like that. Well, it's a good change up by Corey Chamblin, defensive coordinator for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, because Justin Hickman is going to drop, and they're going to load up the opposite side, bring pressure from the right side of the formation. Watch number 95 take a step, then drop into coverage. Anthony Calvillo hasn't seen much of that in the four games they played against this team. And he holds on to the ball a split second longer, and when he does, Marcel Young gets there. Loss of 13, so that basically wipes out the penalty. Second down, more heat. Calvillo intercepted. It's picked up by Jamal Johnson. Breaks a tackle. He may run a while. Jamal Johnson down the sidelines. Cuts it back. And look at this. Jamal Johnson dropped inside the five. A touchdown saver for Jamal Richardson. But the biggest defensive play of the day comes with under a minute to go. And back-to-back -back plays for the Hamilton defense that caused problems for Anthony Calvillo is due to pressure. And it'll be pressure that causes the problem for him again here. Luke Mulliner with a push from the outside. In the middle, Robert Rose gets a good bull rush, closes down the pocket on Calvillo. That ball comes out of there as a quail, and Jamal Johnson is off to the races. Now, if you're an Owls fan, mark the effort by Jamel Richardson. We'll see what happens in the next couple of downs right here. Absolutely. But mark the effort from Jamel Richardson to hustle back and save the touchdown. But look at that pocket just collapsed. What a bull rush inside by Robert Rose. Big guy out of Ohio State. Jamal Johnson's first interception of the year. Looked like he might have been end zone bound. How many points does Richardson save with that great second effort? Quinton Porter comes in. Short yardage team. Two backs. Second man through is Coburn. And Avon Coburn, not much. Bear Woods. Now I think those plays are huge now. This down, it'll come down to what happens here on second down. And Jamel Richardson could be a difference maker. We'll, talk, we'll go back in the fourth. See what happens on this down right here. Jamal Johnson was flashing the bling yesterday. He wore his 2006 Great Cup ring with the BC Lions to inspire him and his teammates. Big play here. Second and goal. Fake to Coburn. Porter into the end zone. Touchdown, Dave Stallop. Quinton Porter with a touchdown toss. And the former Alouette celebrates as Hamilton extends their lead. Quinton Porter took his time. He had two options. He had fullback Darcy Brown out of the backfield, and Dave Stalla was the deeper option. Little pressure in his face, and he keeps his composure, goes to the deep threat, and Dave Stalla at the back of the end zone. Nice catch by 88. Yeah, Jake, buddy, that's for you, man. Yes, Fucking right. Jake Rayner was watching as inspired the Thai Cats with his story. Of a young teenager yeah. who's suffering with cancer, and the Thai Cats spoke with him earlier today. He's been an inspiration. He really has. Jacob, Jacob Rayner, and he, he likes to be called Jake is in the hospital watching with his mother, Natalie, right now. And hey, Dave Stella yes. you gotta keep it going, though. gave him a signed Jake, jersey. You you one. Went, and his mother, yeah, Natalie, yeah, know, had said that it was the first time that hey, Jake call, smiled in a lot in months. He's he's in it, in it tough against cancer. And 
both he and Kevin Glenn went to say hi, and, and the entire team now, before the game put Stay Jake in. on speakerphone. He's been an inspiration, and he said the entire team said hello to Jake and his mother Natalie back in Hamilton, and they've been inspired to go and play their best for Jake. So a special hello to him. And uh, another half, man. Same a special same emotional done. bond between Jake and Dave. So we'll excuse the language that I know. Let's get it back. might Let's offend get it back. some. Yeah, hey, that's what we need. We play, man. We play. Medlock booting it, and just over a half minute left here in the first half. Maypray trying to find the Alouettes, perhaps, for one more. Chance to score up to the 40-yard line, but one more look at the Stella major. Now, I mentioned the two options. One option, Darcy Brown. One option, two options, Dave Stella. That's the second. Brown comes out of the backfield, and he'll be the short one. Now, it's the composure of Quentin Porter now. He's got lots of time. He's got one target here, and he's got to wait for Stella to get open in the back of the end zone and get away from that outside goal post. Once he does that, he drops it to the outside shoulder. And Stalla uses his body to make that catch. Like he had a shot at Darcy Brown, too. Went with the more established target. And now Calvillo with 26 seconds left, down by 11. Wants to cut into that. Pass is complete underneath. London, another grab. He'll get out with the escort of Marcel Young. 19 on the clock and a nine yard gain. Right now, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, even though Calvillo has found, found Brian Bratton, he's found Brandon London, Scott Milanovic has got to figure out a way to start to get the football to Jamel Richardson. Made the big tackle to at least give his defense a chance on that interception by Jamal Johnson. But he has just one catch, Chris, in this first half. So, so far, the Hamilton defense has taken him out of the game. Two for five last week against the Lions. They need about 15 to get into field goal range here. Second and a yard. And Calvillo unloads downfield. Jamal. And guess who's got it? Jamal Richardson wins those battles just about every time. The way they get it to him is to give Calvillo enough time so that he can run a double move because what he's going to do is go corner and then down the rail. Jamel Richardson needs time to execute this kind of pass route. Watch the corner move there. He gets to the sideline, then turns it up on Lois Means. And all season long, AC, or excuse me, Marcel Young, and all season long, AC's been going to that matchup. 41 yards, that pass for Whitaker sailed over the helmet before he turned. And so with one second left, surprised they didn't just throw to the end zone there. They had one play and Missed Whitaker coming out of the backfield, and White will come on to go for three. You're right, Chris, because if he makes that catch and is tackled inbounds, he may not have a chance to go for this. Likely AC threw that away on purpose. 26-yard attempt. And Sean White puts it through. So it'll be a one possession game at the half. It's an eight point Hamilton lead. And a well played opening 30 minutes of the Eastern semifinal. Welcome back. Here are your halftime numbers 24 16 Hamilton, Chelsea. Hey, they did 92 yards rushing. That's good for the Tight Cats. No turnovers yet. That's good for the Tight Cats. Over here, two turnovers. That's bad for Montreal. And only 42 yards rushing the football. That's bad. That's the good and the bad. Hamilton tie cat coach Marcel Belfay just spoke with Sarah Orleski. Coach, we saw a number of players on your defense step up in that first half and make plays, but Jamal Johnson with that interception, is that one of the reasons why you had to have him on the field in this game? Absolutely, because of his big play capability, whether it's getting to the quarterback or in coverage or, or just playing the run, so that was one of those situations. How important was it for this group to go into the half with a lead here in Montreal, a place that this team has struggled in? Well, it was very important for us to get off because, you know, they, they do such a good job, especially in these playoff games at home, coming out strong and getting up on top of teams, so being able to play, you know, with the lead is going to be a better situation for us. Thank you. You're welcome. How the Ticats defense get pressure on Anthony Calvillo. How can you address that? Well, we got to continue to mix it up. We've run the ball fairly effectively, and we've gotten some big plays throwing the ball. We've got to clean up some protection things, with, which I think we've done. That's going to help him out, and, and uh, we got to let him do his thing. 
Jamel Richardson had only two catches last week, only two catches in the first half. What are they doing effectively to contain him? Well, we're just mixing it up, and uh, he's the guy who's who's been covered. But we have gotten him football a couple of times, and we'll continue to try to work that way in, in the second half. Thank you, Mark. You bet. Anthony Calvillo does have 228 yards passing so far, but the Ticats have 10 points off turnovers. Jamel Richardson, sorry, Chris, one of the catches was late in that first half. But you heard Mark Tressman saying he hasn't been the open receiver, so Anthony Calvillo has gone to Brian Bratton a couple of times, S.J. Green a couple of times, Brandon London involved in the offense. But you can bet any opportunity they can to get it back to number 18, they'll try to. Different script for the Alouettes. They are a notorious front-running team. And they come from behind here on home turf today. And not much for Marcus Thigpen as he gets steamrolled downfield. There was Seth Williams along with Darren Diedrich as Thigpen was stationary and dropped at the 25. Take a look at what Kevin Glenn did in the first half. 10 of 14, 106 yards. Had a big one drop to Chris Williams in the first quarter. Numbers would have been a lot better. But no interceptions. Avoiding the turnover, Chris Schultz mentioned at halftime, which is very important for Kevin Glenn. I mentioned in the last two playoff games for Hamilton, he's been over 300 yards in both, but the turnover was the issue. So avoided that in the first half. Close to five up near the 30 yard line. Tiger Cats with only two road wins on the season. And in the last three years, Marshall Belfay's team has been at 517 different times. Let's take a look at rookie sensation Chris Williams and see if he is running well on an ankle that had to be retaped in that first half. Second and five. Yeah, they're going to go deep for Carter. Matt Carter and incomplete. Looked like he had a step in behind DeAndre Dix. But Dix recovers, and it's a long, loud incompletion. Yeah, not only does he recover, but he recovers well enough and composed enough to turn, look back at the football, and back into Matt Carter rather than interfere with him facing the downfield direction. That could draw the penalty flag. Watch him turn, good composure. Then he puts his hands up. No penalty. What a great kick by Medlock, and it bounces down for Mayfrey, who finally drops on it at the 36-yard line, and no flags. Let's check Anthony Calvillo's numbers through 30 minutes. 228 yards on pace for a 400-yard passing game. The one interception to Jamal Johnson, a big one. He had just given up a sack on first down, went to try and throw on second. Jamal Johnson set up the Dave Stalla touchdown on his interception. Now Dave Randorf mentioned it. It's a different script here at Olympic Stadium this year in the postseason. The last two years, they outscored their opponents 104-35 to in playoff action. And in the last three, 140 to 61, where the Alouettes have feasted here at the Big O. Well, like Avon Coburn told us right out of the gate in warm up, when he looked into our camera and said, they can't just win one game and get to the final this year. So even if they can come back, Mark Tressman's crew can come back in this semifinal, they've got to go through Winnipeg to get there. And that is a very different script for the Alouettes. Have a few viewers in Winnipeg today taking notes. I think so. In Swaggerville, second and seven. Calvillo steps up and takes off, and he's going to run for the first down. Well, he said we might see more of it today, and that's a key eight-yard run for Calvillo to move the chains. Well, just take a look at how Anthony Calvillo goes through his reads and doesn't find the receiver he likes. There's one there. Go ahead and run it, guys. He doesn't like that side. He goes over here, two, no, three down the middle, nothing there. Go ahead and run it, keep it running. And then he goes and said the fourth option is to take off and run, and even with Jamal Johnson bearing down, gets the first down. The 
first down. Pass is incomplete in the area of Jamal Richardson. Boy, and one of the matchups we wanted to set up in that first half with Jeff Parrott moving from right tackle to left tackle. He's played a great game against Justin Hickman primarily throughout this game. Luke Mullender occasionally. In this case, it's Mullender. And look at the dominance there. Just does not let Mullender anywhere near his quarterback. He talked about Tressman at halftime, saying that he needed to make those adjustments at halftime. Help with protection. But Jeff Parrott's been solid. Big guy to Lethbridge. Replacing Josh Bork on that side. Bork out for the rest of the year. Here comes Heat. Calvillo shook that off. And now, incomplete. Brian Bratton was out of bounds. Stepped back in. And I... Not sure that would have counted anyway, but it's an incompletion, and Mark Tressman's crew has to send the punt team on. Remember when Tressman said we're going to shore up some protection things? Well, watch this. This is the matchup again. Jeff Parrott. Now watch what they're going to do with Brandon Whitaker. Take Whitaker outside. Little chip there to help out Parrott. Let him set up his block. Therefore, Justin Hickman's not a, an issue for Anthony Calvillo. He misses the throw, but the protection on that side, solid. That was Milt Collins on the blitz who missed Calvillo. Here's Thigpen at the 18. Jeff Heck there. He hurdles Heck and then gets brought down across the 25. So still an eight point tie cat lead early, third quarter. And TSN Mobile TV take you in the huddle as the tie cats go back to work on offense. Their second possession of the second half. Starting at their own 27. Play action fake, and now they pump it off, and Coburg got closed down by Bear Woods, the middle linebacker replacing the injured Ramon Guzman. One guy we haven't talked about much on that Alouette defense has been the linebacker pairing of Chip Cox, Diamond Ferry. Diamond Ferry was nicked in the BC game, but has practiced all week. And Chip Cox was blocked well on that Marcus Thigpen run of 50 yards for a touchdown. He's been a guy they've relied on to make that big play when the Alouette defense needs it most. Six for Coburn, second and four. Inside it goes, and there is a hard run by Coburn for a big first down. And the Tiger Cats go over 100 yards rushing on the day. This is the definition of when Mark Tressman said running vicious. This is the definition of running vicious. Watch Avon Colburn against Bear Woods in the middle. Step up, right in position, and he delivers a blow. Big first down conversion. Tiger Cats are 5-0 this year. They're rushing for over 100. Big to Colburn and a wide open for Perry Grant. Grant who has a touchdown catch in this game. Wrestled out by Chip Cox, but he's in Montreal territory at the Alouette 42. Play action here to Avon Colburn. Buys Kevin Glenn just a little bit more time as he's going to roll out and then be patient and wait for Grant to come across the formation and be in that second layer in front of the defensive secondary but in behind the linebacking core but the play action was the extra second Glenn needed 28 for Grant and a first down on the fringe of field goal range for Hamilton Chris Williams with a cutback breaks the tackle and then gets brought down forward progress should be close to the 40 and just a couple for Chris Williams. Kahari Jones knows that what you talked about, the importance of Colburn, the importance of a running game for a pocket quarterback like Kevin Glenn. 5-0 and when they're over 100 yards rushing. They've won one of their last five to end the regular season. In those five, they didn't have a 100-yard rushing game. Second and eight. Throws him by a stride. That's the second time Chris Williams has got him behind coverage. You know, though, Chris, when I watch Chris Williams on that post, it didn't look like he was able to adjust and straighten it up and go up the seam, adjust to that football. And I'm not sure if it's his ankle. I don't want to give him an alibi. 
but he has been able to make adjustments on the fly much better than that during the regular season. Maybe Kevin Glenn was throwing at the Chris Williams speed he's used to all season long. No question. So Medlock from 47 out. Trying to make it a two-score lead for Hamilton. Nate Prey awaits in the end zone, but Medlock won't give him a chance to bring it out. Tie Cats extend their lead here in the third quarter. By the corner on first down. Played the last four games of the regular season. Second and five. Calvillo underneath. And look out, Ray Williams lowers the boom. And that's the importance of that play. It may be a small thing by Lois Means on the outside to Correll S.J. Green. But if it's second and three, that's a first down, and the Owls continue in this offensive series. But it wasn't because of the play of Lois Means. They have to dump it off. Ray Williams makes the tackle. Montreal's got to punt the football. Two and out. Thanks to that tackle by Ray Williams, fourth in the league in tackles. Sean White. Good boot. Chris Williams has to backpedal inside his 15. And a run across the 20 before he's taken down. That's a 53-yard kick by White. Well, you know it's a big game if we're at the big O and if Sarah Oleski's on the sidelines. Well, Chris, the two-time defending Grey Cup champion Montreal Alouettes this season are trying to do something that very few teams have ever been able to do, and that's win three Grey Cup championships in a row. How rare is it? The Grey Cup has been handed out 98 times, and only three teams have ever won at least three consecutive Grey Cups, the last one being the Edmonton Eskimos, who won five in a row from 1978 to 1982. And the Alouettes certainly have their work cut out for them today. When trailing at the half this season, they were one and seven. Pass for Chris Williams is incomplete as Kevin Glenn takes a hit. Well, they've got to win three in a row to win three in a row. And mm. this first step is, as we have seen already, going to be exceedingly difficult. And every year brings with it its own set of challenges. And in our discussion yesterday with Coach Tressman, he talked about how challenging this year has been with his injuries to his secondary. He lost his middle linebacker an hour before kickoff here, none of which anyone on this team has used as an excuse. But it's an uphill battle right now. Second and ten. Went to the wide side. There's Stella trying to cut it back. Tripped up by Paul Waldo. And he's going to be a couple yards short of the first down. And that'll put the punt team on the field. That's another corner play. A tackle. Made in the open field by Paul Waldo. If he doesn't make this, Dave Stallett not only picks up the first down, but probably another 10-15. But Waldo right outside. Dave Stallett, the wide receiver. And watch the open field tackle. Fifth round draft pick back in 2008. 36 overall. Getting his chance to play in that corner. That's a big play. Better punt by Medlock. And Diamond Ferry's got this back at the 36. Great cover. Downfield by the Thai Cats, led by Kyle Jones. Looking forward to that, David, as Edmonton gets a home playoff field advantage after a long time without. Here's Brandon London, who's been loose. Absorbed the first hit and gets a few extra yards. 19 for Brandon London. Playing that wide receiver spot on the wide field. And the way the Hamilton Tiger Cats are spending so much time with Jamel Richardson defensively, Anthony Calvillo may have to continue to be patient and work Brandon London on that wide side of the field. He's found that little dead spot in the coverage. A couple of catches for him out there now. London, a first down. Look for Whitaker into the backfield. Goes the other way, and London's got that. Marcel Young will drag him down at the 45-yard line. Great first down production, and it's going to be 
Well, might even be enough for a first down. You know, that's the that's the third or fourth now I've I've counted, and and this is the hash mark. So the wide field, this direction, and the Ty Cats rolling that coverage to Jamel Richardson, who Calvillo looked at first, and then he finds the dead spot. Now that dead spot's going to end up being right here. Watch as London is going to come down and find it. And it's going to mean that Anti Calvillo's got to be patient. There he is right out there in that dead spot. That's back-to-back -back catches. Brandon London, who has not had a 100-yard game, only one over 50 yards during the regular season. Ten there, oh, oh, first oh, down. Oh, oh, oh. There it is again. Pratt. And Lois Means closed quickly. They'll rule forward progress to 39. And so Bratton has five. This is what's going to happen now. You see Means, Lois Means is getting impatient with that dead spot on the outside. Now this is, the, this is what happens when you start to jump that shorter out by the wide receiver. You're going to go now. You see Anthony Cavill. Hold it there, guys, for a second. That next option will be right here to Jamel Richardson. As soon as you start to pull the secondary towards that flat route, that sideline route to Brandon London or outside there, you're going to get the one in behind. Second and five, a big gain. Whitaker straight ahead has the first down as the Ticats brought Robert Rose out for an extra deep back, and Brandon Whitaker exposes that for a dozen. Boy, this is just great. A great job from Scott Milanovic, the offensive coordinator, to evolve as this game goes on. And watch the hole opened up by that offensive line as Brandon Whitaker does a nice job of cutting back against the grain, being patient, and then finding the hole in the backside of the formation. Rose checks back in, three receivers in motion to the wide side, a double tight end, and they run wide side. Whitaker cuts it back and is inside the 20 before he gets stopped up and tossed out by Jamal Johnson. You know, there's a lot of football to be played here, and Scott Milanovic has made some great adjustments on the fly here to work the outside sideline play on the wide field to either Brandon London, whatever receiver they put out there as a wide receiver, doesn't matter. Bottom line being, he's found how the Hamilton Tiger Cats are rotating. They've used London out on that sideline. Now Corey Chamblin, if he starts to react to that, the defensive coordinator, he could open up things to Jamel Richardson. There's a great chess match going on right now. They've settled for a couple short field goals. Let's see if they can punch this in. Another first down run for Brandon Whitaker, close to the 10. And one other thing that happens, Chris, when you start pushing the ball wide, is your linebackers feel like they need to widen. And as they widen more, it opens up run lanes. And now Scott Milanovic has gone to Brandon Whitaker in three straight plays. Great chess match. Brandon Whitaker now, 12 carries, 73 yards. First down from just outside the 10. Here's Calvillo, Whitaker into the backfield, and Royce Means tracked him. That ball loose and wide, and it is D. Webb who's got it. And are they ruling football? Yes, yes they are. Hamilton it is ball. Hamilton football. I know Mark Tressman's going to want to take a look at this as to whether or not he tries to throw that challenge flag. Looking up at the review monitors here, he'll get his crew about up in the booth also looking closely. Was he down by contact? before the ball came out. Still has control. Almost simultaneous. Wow. The rule on the field is a fumble. And the challenge flag is also on the field here at the Big O. And this will be an enormous call. And a tough one. I mean, you're right, Chris. It's almost simultaneous that the ball comes out just as his backside is touching the ground. Let's let's do it as slowly as we can. Tut and the ball at the same time. There's space there now. Touched. Oh, wow. Still simultaneous. Wow. Montreal is challenging a ruling on the field of a fumble. We'll review the play. 
Uh, it's, that's going to be so close. I mean, now that's exactly, we've frozen it when he touches the ground first. Now, you tell me, is that constitute control of the football right there? Only Jake Ireland knows for sure. Yeah. From that side, that ball, well, again, if we can back that up and freeze, you can see it pop out. It looked like from that angle, it may be out. Now, again, it's wow. virtually simultaneous. If that's... You know, we've, we've had replay for a few years now. I think this is the closest one I've, I've ever seen. Lots of great looks at it. And yet, you know, the ruling again is going to be important here, Chris. The ruling was fumble turnover Hamilton football, which means they have to find enough evidence to overturn that call and for Mark Tressman to win. Right, and therein lies the question. Did, are those replays conclusive? I don't think I've seen one that close. First touch there. Again, that's exactly the same freeze frame. And it'll be up to Jake Ireland to decide, does Brandon Whitaker have control for a, a split second there before in the next split second that ball comes completely out of his hands? Is that control of the football right there? Because it's out a second later, split second later. Wow. And one more look the other way. Instantaneous. Think of, just think about the importance of this call too, and where the football is on the field. They're going to take their time, make sure they get this right. And I, and if nothing else, it illustrates how difficult the job on the field is, without question. And here we go. To review, it will be Montreal ball placed on the six yard line. So, according to Jake Ireland, that split second when Whitaker touched the ground, his backside touched the ground. That second right there, he still had control, so he touches now. That is constitute, he's got control of the football. And then, wow. And overturned it. I'm still not sure what the right call is, but I'm not sure we saw anything conclusive to overturn it. I know that's what. Here we go. Second and goal. Calvillo into the end zone. As S.J. Green was wrestling with Lois Beans, it'll be first and goal at the one. Pass interference, Hamilton, number 29. The infraction took place in goal, be first down on the one yard line. Well, I'll say this about the play of Lois Beans in this Hamilton secondary, they're making it tough. Uh, that was marginal, marginal pass interference call. The last right hand on the forearm of S.J. Green, I think, did it. Adrian McPherson, short yardage team, sneaks, touchdown. And the Alouettes get back within a major score. Clutch drive here late, third quarter. And it may end up being a contentious one, too. Now the importance now for the Hamilton Tiger Cats is not to dwell on whether it was a good call, bad call, or whatever. It's behind them now. S.J. Green fought in the back of the end zone to draw the flag after that close call that overturned what looked like a fumble. Shot 
fight the extra point, and it's a four-point deficit for the defending Great Cup champs. But prior to all that, there was a great chess match you talked about, and a terrific drive engineered by Calvillo and called by Scott Milanovic. And a drive like that takes time. So now Corey Chamblin's challenge after seeing what happened in that last series and using the wide side of the field to Brandon London. Now he's got to determine, do they stay with man and maybe lock up Royce Means on Brandon London on the outside and send some pressure. He's talking to Jamal Johnson, the linebacker right now, which would indicate to me they may look to try and get some more pressure. And then what does Scott Milanovic have to answer that? Seven plays, 73 yards, just under five minutes, 4.51, the time of this scoring march by Montreal with a minute 20 left in the third quarter. Good playoff game here at the Big O. White the kickoff, and Think Pen ready to rock. And the return up beyond the 40-yard line. That ball popped loose. Who's got it? Suddenly, the momentum turning. Ticats looking to the bench to say, you got to challenge it. And we'll find out if Marcel Belfay does just that. Was it Jeff Heck with the big play? Let's take a look. Marcus Sinkpen, very similar situation. And I think Marcel Belfay will likely challenge this as well. I mean, no question. And this one won't take as long. I don't think so either. He gets hit here as control, or does he? Uh, looked pretty clean right there. He's down right now by contact. The ball does not look loose, but it is hidden in front of him on that view. And there was one side view that looked like it shifted in his arms as he was going down. So in the space of four or five plays, it goes back to Toronto for some critical calls. Twice. Jeff Hecht, who's pressed into service in his rookie year as a starter. Hamilton is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. We'll review the play. Think Penn's second effort looked like he was going to be stopped five yards short, rolled off, and in his effort to gain more yardage. May have turned it over. Kerry Carter there. You could see as Thigpen was going down, the ball was shifting in his left arm, but was it shifting enough again to constitute the fact that he's lost control of it? Thought it was clearly down here, but you're right. Well, he doesn't completely lose it, lose it, Chris, until he is well down. I yeah. mean, that's way after the fact. But is that shift enough? Right there. See, the ball is shifting, but still under his arm. Certainly under his arm. And now he is down on his hip right there. I, boy, that's back-to-back, <laughs> -back, that close. Two calls that are almost identical. After review. Placed at the 39 yard line, it will be Hamilton ball. Player is down by contact. And a similar ruling made. Hamilton will not be charged the timeout, although they do not have any more challenges remaining. So both teams win a critical challenge here in the space of a minute or so. And Marcel Belfay can breathe a little easier. And both times the ruling from Toronto. And Jake Ireland basically gave the benefit of the doubt to the ball carrier. Both Brandon Whitakers and Marcus Thigpen. Tycat start double tight end and they amp up the noise. Thank to Colbert. Pitch into the hands of Williams. And Chris Williams who has had a 
sketchy day. Just drew a face guard penalty as well, and there's flags all over. That's a big throw, and it, for more reasons than one, that Kevin Glenn got the ball to Chris Williams. Since his drop in the first quarter on a deep ball. Major foul, face mask. Montreal number 40. 15 yards to the end of the play, automatic first down. Diamond Ferry. Since his drop in the first quarter, Kevin Glenn has gone deep to him twice, and he has come up short on both, both incompletions. And I just wonder about the confidence level of a young rookie. There's the face mask by Diamond Ferry, no question there. That catch alone may go a long way to restoring some of that confidence. Now down to the other one. 45, there's Thinkman with the bubble out there. Get away from Stewart, but then he gets dropped. By Seth Williams, a couple of yards on the play, but he avoided a loss as Anwar Stewart was into the backfield quickly. And if Chris Williams gets that confidence back, it looks like he's running well, then Marcel Belfe and this offense, Kahari Jones, can go back with Thigpen in the backfield along with Avon Coburn as an option which is part of the big part of the game plan they had coming in, but had to abandon it when Chris Williams was a little wobbly. Mark Olivier Bouillette replaces Jeff Hecht at safety. Second and seven. They are close to field goal range. Glenn looking for more than that, and this one is intercepted. DeAndre Dix picks it off, and the Cats squander a chance to add to their lead. Third quarter, a big takeaway by Montreal. Here are the numbers after three quarters after that key turnover by Hamilton on the final play of the third. You know, we talked about the run game for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Over 100 yards. They have won every game. They've done that. Over 100 yards, 5-0. and oh. But the Montreal Alouettes, when they win the time of possession, 90% of the time they win. So... <laughs> It's going to be a great fourth quarter. Interception thrown by Kevin Glenn, but first, Calvillo and company. First down at the 15, S.J. Green. And a swing away from Lois Means and runs into Ray Williams, who tosses him down as he gives up some yards. But let's take a look at how Montreal got the ball. Marcus Thigpen on the DeAndre Dix interception loses the football and because he's not a real experienced receiver he's a running back first a receiver second when you lose foot the football find the guy covering you because he'll go get it and he, Marcus Thigpen lost the football and he lost Dix Dix kept his feet in bounds and that's a turnover the end of that play it was well done by Dix to make sure he had a Put in bounds after the juggle. Second down and Calvillo for traffic. Incomplete. Knocked out of the hands of Richardson by Markeith Knowlton. And so the Hamilton defense rallies for a two and out after the giveaway by the offense. Boy, there are so many battles going on within this game. This secondary and linebacking core playing great coverage on two of the best receivers in the Canadian Football League and Jamel Richardson, the best. And S.J. Green, tremendous coverage there. There's the protection issue up front. Jeff Parrott playing excellent for the Montreal Alouettes. High snap and White oh boy. is able to pull that down and get it away. No pressure on from Hamilton. Here's Thinkpen. And he gets outside. Marcus Thinkpen across midfield. And dropped at the Montreal 48. Great field position after the 17-yard return. 17-yard return. They've set it back up for Hamilton. First down inside the Montreal 50. It's Colburn. Straight ahead for a couple as Anwar Stewart makes the tackle. Marcus Thigpen, the intended receiver on the DeAndre Dix interception. He gets the ball on the punt return. Watch this. Great move on Darren Diedrich in the open field. Looked like he's caught there for about a seven-yard gain. Bounces it. Good speed up the sideline. 17-yard return gives his quarterback real good field position. Ticats have converted just once on five second downs. Here in the second half, they were five for ten in the first half. Second and long. They go to court. Grant trying to battle for the first down, won't do it. 
but that'll set up what should be a 49-yard field goal attempt for Justin Medlock. Yeah, that, that extra effort from Grant took a little pressure off his kicker, if anything. Because when he caught it, it would have been about a 53, 54 yarder. And every, anytime you are 50 or beyond, the kicker can start to feel that pressure. But a little extra effort, another four, five, even six yards there for Grant. Medlock's inside of 50. has done it again. Boy, the field goal kicking in this league this year has been spectacular. Here this afternoon, I think that Jeff Parrott moving from right tackle to left has been outstanding this afternoon. Kari Grant, Jamel Richardson from battles and Jamal Johnson. Here's Calpio over the middle. declares early that he is coming out of the middle to the left of your screen number four is the safety comes out of the middle no one covers Delorier at the slot back spot to the left of Calvillo and he outruns the pursuit of Lois Meads the man who caught the touchdown for Anthony Calvillo's record setter has a bigger touchdown here in a playoff game. Tie game. And still 12 minutes plus to go. With what I see here, Chris, the Hamilton Tiger Cat safety, Carlos Thomas. Went to the wrong side. Delorier is the inside receiver. There's one cover guy, two cover guys, and one, two, three receivers for the Alouettes to the field. No one walks out on Eric Delorier. I have to believe safety Carlos Thomas went to the wrong side of the field. And you can see him turn and realize it, number four to the right of your screen. He's been in that safety spot for a month, and he's made a difference there. But what might be a critical mistake? One, two here, and you've got one, two, three covering here. That's the mistake. Carlos Thomas, the safety, went to the wrong side of the field and left Delorey on the top, absolutely uncovered. There's the safety gone to the wrong side. So Eric Delorey with seven catches now in the year and three have gone for touchdowns and that's his biggest 75 yarder he tied thick pit outside sean white's gonna have to bring him down and get some help from Briette. A 40-yard burst by Thigpen, who has been terrific here to set up field position for Kevin Glenn. You draw up the defense, and the defense drawn up was pressure, and all he needed, Corey Chamblin, was for Carlos Thomas to go to the field side and cover down on Eric Delorier. And as soon as that defensive coordinator got Carlos Thomas to the sideline, he had that discussion with him, just went the wrong way. the Ticats. Great field position. Little shovel across the middle and Coburn drags for a first down just inside the 40-yard line before he's pulled down 11 yards. And Kevin Glenn took a hit at the end of the play and Quentin Porter's going to have to come in. Take a look and see what happened to Kevin Glenn on the play. He had to step up and wait for Coburn to get loose from the line of scrimmage. So he takes a hit there from both Anwar Stewart and John Bowman. 
Yeah, defensive end sandwich Glenn. And he remains down, and this is one of the reasons late in the year with the Ticats out of the race for anything higher than third. Marcel Belfay wanted to make sure that his other quarterback was ready in case he was needed. And Quentin Porter is needed right now as Kevin Glenn it remains down. Doesn't get any more important than 11 to go in a tie game. Well, he's thrown a touchdown pass today. And now a quick hitter to Chris Williams. And Williams is away inside the 20. And the speeds are dragged down about the 8-yard line and a flag at the end of that. And it looks like Williams has drawn a second face mask penalty here in the second half. 32-yard gain. And a great response by the Tiger Cats after that lightning strike by Major AC. Kyle, face mask, Montreal, number 11. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So it was very earlier, now Chip Cox. Good read on the play by Quentin Porter to hit here, Chris Williams. He's going to get Thigpen to run off, and the two receivers inside run off. Then Mark, uh, Chris Williams just sits down underneath that. Beats Billy Parker to the outside and picks up good yards and a penalty at the end of it. So he still has some giddy up and he may have his confidence back after a shaky start in his first playoff game. First and goal from the four. Here's Coburn. Nothing. Bounces off. Avon Coburn. And more flags fly as he's dropped at the two. Wouldn't go down. Second effort. And is it another face mask against the Owls? And it might be back-to-back -back against Chip Cox. You know, most running backs cannot afford to hesitate down in the goal line. Major foul, face mask, Montreal, number 11. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the play. Automatic first down. First not, goal at the one. Not a, a big deal in yards because of where they were, but it is because they get that first down now on the one-yard line. And, Avon Colburn is one of those backs that can get away with hesitating on the sideline and still make something happen, or excuse me, on the goal line and still make something happen. Not much question about the call either. No. First and goal at the one. Darcy Brown's the fullback. Colburn behind him. And Porter lunging touchdown. Ticats are back in front. It's a gamble to do that, but Quentin Porter got such a good surge, he could reach across with that football, but as soon as you extend it away from your body, you're you're taking a gamble that the, uh, the defense could swat it out of your hands before it crosses the plane, but he got a good surge, and there's the ball clearly across before he loses control. Nine touchdowns to the regular season. He's passed for one, now he runs for one here. That's an impressive response by the Ticats after the breakdown in coverage on the last Montreal possession. It's once again a seven-point lead. Thirty-seven thirty, with over right, ten minutes to go. See you soon. Welcome to the I'll CFL playoffs. Let's go back to the big play on that drive was Chris Williams and that first play for Quentin Porter. Bakari Grant is going to head up the field with Marcus Thigpen so that Chris Williams can hide in behind. And what it does is it causes Billy Parker just enough hesitation. Stop it there, guys. Billy Parker just hesitates because he sees Grant. It gets, gets in his vision. Then he reacts up, and by then he's lost his angle. But the right read by Quentin Porter has to come off the bench for a banged-up Kevin Glenn. Throws it right on the money to Williams. That sets it up. And a good response, as you mentioned, Chris. Hi, honey. See you soon. Give uh, Baby Lotus a kiss for me. You're going to come home with a win. Hey. Now, technically speaking, Kevin Glenn has been out for three plays. So we'll have to watch him on the sideline and see if it'll be Quentin Porter or Glenn in the next series. Although I don't see Glenn with his helmet anywhere near him. Headlock launches. Maypre inside his five. And Maypre with a 
good return and then gets dropped by Ray Marius back out of retirement. And he has been a welcome addition back. The veteran Tiger Cat linebacker with a special teams tackle. Now this Hamilton secondary, Chris, has got to shake a bad play. I mean, the the big touchdown throw to Eric Delorier, Corey Chamblin's group's got to now settle down. It's a young group back there. And the key here is to not allow one mistake turn into two. So now Carlos Thomas got to settle things down. Now, will they show a lot of zone defense and get organized? Brandon Whitaker sets up at wide receiver. Kerry Carter stays in. And here's Calvillo slinging for Richardson. And he's got it. They follow the football and then ends up with plenty of extra yards. But it starts out, Chris, with D. Webb giving Jamal Richardson lots of room. And again, when you've made a bad play in the secondary, this is natural to go ahead and give the receivers more room on the next series because you don't want to get beat deep again. So it starts out that way with D. Webb giving Richardson lots of room underneath. Go ahead and run it. Now, Richardson gets a little lucky after the catch, but look at the cushion that D. Webb gave him. That ball came out, bounced right back wow. up to him. 26-yard pickup, first down, Whitaker. Inside run, dropped at the 42-yard line. There's Jamal Johnson with another tackle. All kinds of time to trade touchdown marches yet. So no panic in the defending champions huddle. And we have not mentioned Justin Hickman since the first quarter, Chris. And Again, I keep going back to it because it's so difficult. Chris Schultz will tell you how tough it is to change from one side of the O-line to the other. It's been Jeff Parrott against Justin Hickman all game. On the backfield, there's S.J. Green as he came out of that scatter on the wide side and ends up with a first down run on the short side of the field. And he had to make the one-man miss to get there. No pressure on Calvillo. He can hesitate and make sure that S.J. Green clears the linebacker. Watch him on the play action. Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Then he's clear. Now he can dump it off to him. One guy has to be beat. That's Bo Smith on the play. S.J. Green picks up first down territory. Ten-yard gain for S.J. Green. Carlos Thomas, the safety, shaken up on the play, so Bill Collins will come in to take his spot. It will be Milton Collins, the former Calgary Stampeder. So first down, Alouettes at the 31. Take to Whitaker and again, London. Similar play as the last to S.J. Green. And the Alouettes are rolling. 16 for Brandon London. Hamilton getting their Tiger, their linebackers in tight. Look at Jamal Johnson in tight. There's Ray Williams all the way to the other side of center. That's going to allow the leverage for the Alouettes to get outside, whether it be Brandon London, whether it be Brandon Whitaker, S.J. Green on the last play. As the linebackers keep moving into the interior of the defense, they're using the outside edge. First down and Whitaker short yardage inside. And there's your answer, Chris, as to why Jamal Johnson, Ray Williams are so concerned between the tackles because of number two. Seen some good looking drives for Montreal today where it's as if they have these sequences planned and this has been this bunch formation drive, although not in it here. Second and almost 10. Uncovered. A 14-yard touchdown strike. And we're a point after away from being tied at 37. 
Protection, protection. Calvillo gets pressure from his left. Hamilton going with a corner blitz and Marcel Young picked up well enough to give him time to go to the field in a wide open Jamel Richardson. He asked us yesterday who they going to put on me at crunch time. Well, they didn't have anybody on him there. And the game is tied. This play has been run before by Hamilton. What Here is Marcel Young. They're also going to bring a little bit late Jamal Johnson. But watch Whitaker here. He's going to also get some help from Eric Delorier. who will come down. Go ahead and run it, guys. Here comes the blitz. Okay, stop it there. Picked up nicely. Brandon Whitaker in good position. Jeff Parrott has taken Luke Mullender out of the play at defensive end right there. Protection on the backside on the blitz. Allows Anthony Calvillo to go to the field and hit Jamel Richardson. That was the play that Hamilton got the sack from Jamal Johnson earlier in the game. They didn't get it that time. That time, AC gets the touchdown. Seventy-four points on the board and far from over. Defending Great Cup champions not willing to go down. Think Pen again trying to set things up. And a run out near the 35. Walter Spencer, special teams demon for the Alouettes with a tackle. And it will be Kevin Glenn. So Porter got the job done when Glenn was knocked out of the last Ticat series. But the starter's back in now. How resilient are the Ticats? We've seen how resilient the Alouettes are. across the 50-yard line. Boy, he is not running out of, de- out of bounds. Avon Coburn is going to take the fight to the Montreal Alouettes. And this is this is what Marcel Belfay talked about. This is what Sarah Oleski before the game talked about in her hit, saying that he was brought in for more than just offensive production on the field. Avon Coburn was brought in for veteran leadership. And they need a drive right now to respond to that Montreal drive, and they started with number 22. Avon calling for 18. First down, the out, complete. Dave Stella, or check that Darcy Brown, the fullback, has the catch. By the way, with that last touchdown drive, Anthony Calvillo in this game has thrown for 406 yards. That is a career playoff high for Anthony Calvillo as he continues to set milestones and records, both personal and otherwise. And he's going to need even more today. But that might answer some questions about whether or not he has more in him at age 39. Give him time, and he will dissect a defense. Darcy Brown has a first down for Hamilton. Just continues to maintain his focus. Not involved right now with what the defense is doing. Separate himself from the rest of the team to go over his next play package on the sideline. Question might be today, who gets the ball last? Absolutely. Into Montreal territory. First down, Alouette 48. Williams on the sweep. Nothing doing the 35-year-old veteran in his 11th year slams the door on Chris Williams, drops him for a three-yard loss. Anwar Stewart has to beat the double team because the, the Hamilton Tiger Cats put tight end Darcy Brown outside of him. Should have had leverage there. Anwar Stewart, this is film work. Tim Tebasar knows he's got a veteran that can beat a well-designed offensive play because 
That should have worked for Hamilton with the tight end outside of the defensive end, and Anwar Stewart sniffed it out. It's loud here. Second down. And that ball over the head of Thigpen, who was turning as the ball went by his ear. And the tie cat drive stalls. Second time for, for Marcus Thigpen that it's about recognition, play recognition, and and Thigpen has got to realize blitz is coming and that Kevin Glenn won't have a lot of time. So he's got to get his head around quickly and find the football. Because he was open. So now Medlock, who has not had a great punting day, looks to pin. Nate Bray's going to field this at the seven. Cover team does its job. Dropping Maypray. That's a 52-yarder by Medlock and Kevin Scott down in a hurry to make the tackle. Safety Carlos Thomas back in the game for this defensive series for Hamilton. But the chess match between coordinators here, certainly offensive coordinator Scott Milinovic against Corey Chamblin. The Hamilton Tire Cats has been just a great example of how your game plan, both offensively and defensively, has got to continue to evolve. How to pick up pressure, how to make those adjustments necessary. Alouette start inside their 10. Calvillo underneath Whitaker. Short gain at the 12, but the heat was on Calvillo at his goal line. Carlos Thomas, after that play where Eric Delorier got behind him, has now backed out of there and is almost 25 yards deep before the snap of the football so that he does not give up another big one. Look at Jamel Richardson wide open over the middle. Now, Calvillo didn't have time there, but don't think for a second Scott Milinovic hasn't seen that and may go back to it. Jamal Johnson, the tackle, second and five after the... Whitaker catch, big play. Calvillo flushed. Now throws it. The pass incomplete. No flag, and Richardson gets up thinking there should have been. Well, I'm he, not sure he's not wrong. Yeah, I think he's got an argument. However, there is no flag, and the Alouettes have to be composed here. Mark Tressman told us in their two losses during the regular season to Hamilton, they at times lost their composure. Now, I think you're right, Chris. Jamel Richardson has an argument. He was turned by Carlos Thomas there, but no flag, and they all almost lost it. Brandon London went up and down the official. And now Sean White standing in his end zone. Williams awaits near midfield. White's kick. There's Williams at the 51. Got through the first surge, steps out at the Alouette bench on the Alouette side of half. 46-yard punt. Seven on the return with under three and a half minutes to go. And the tie Cats in this tie game have field position advantage. Boy, and they're in that that point where you got to believe you got to take advantage of this kind of field position right now because you know with the veteran Anthony Calvillo quarterback who has thrown for more yards than any quarterback in pro football history he's going to get another chance he's going to move the ball again it's time right now for the tie Cats. out of a double tight end formation that pass complete the flat there's Chris Williams who has had a significant in impact in the second half after a shaky debut in his first playoff game in the opening half of play, seven yards. Play call made by Kahari Jones. So it's a one for seven, second half, second down conversions. A big one upcoming. Lots of choices here. Could even run the ball here. that ball 
for that touchdown to Belton Johnson, Simeon Rotier, and Mark DeWitt, the right side of the offensive line. And they're the ones who are going to spring up. Look at that right side. He hits the hole full speed. They wash out that side. And look at the hole for Avon Coburn. And Bakari Grant on John Bowman on the back side gets away with a bit of a hold. Yes, he does. Headlock. Had to double clutch there, but puts the extra point through. Is that enough? Look at this as they just slide down and then Bakari Grant will come in here and he'll pick up the trailer, the backside guy in John Bowman. So slide to the right, Rotier, DeWitt right here. Great block at the point of attack and on the backside, a bit of a hold, but right there in the line of scrimmage, you'll get away with that more than you won't. Here's Calvillo in trouble under duress, scrambling, throwing, and completing to Brandon London. only once this year Brandon London over 50 yards but he has been a regular target here today with five catches of, check that four catches of over 10 yards and that one worth another seven at, so, the, at the end of that play Chris Anthony Calvillo talked to Brandon Whitaker about his protection issues there second and three out of the backfield is Whitaker dropped by Bo Smith. When we talked to AC yesterday, he felt that most of the problems in BC initially were because they were not getting Whitaker out of the backfield as a second or third option. Well, they can get him out of the backfield if they can get their tackles blocking the way they need to be and right at the top of your screen. Jeff Parrott is going to be one-on-one -on -one again on Justin Hickman. 13 sacks on the season and we haven't heard from Hickman today, this afternoon. Lots of time again. from the side that he wants to throw the football and that was his left to S.J. Green who does the rest. If you joined us late you'll be able to catch this on ESPN Classics one day. What a football game it's been and We've still got a lot left. Oh, we we do. And I just want to show you this game that's been going on. Justin Hickman hasn't been able to get pressure, so occasionally Corey Chamlin will drop him and get him underneath any throw or drop him wide. This time, no, Hickman doesn't come on the blitz or on the rush, and he doesn't drop either. So he's really covering nobody here. No pressure in the throwing lane to Anthony Calvillo. He doesn't get underneath S.J. Green outside, and there is absolutely no pressure there. It allows Calvillo to hit it to Green, put it right on the money, and S.J. Green does the rest, cutting back. Second receiver inside, Brandon Bre uh, Brian Braden brings his split right down to give him some room and see if Hickman drops here and at least gets in the passing lane, it may be a little more difficult of a throw. He doesn't. Too close to the line of scrimmage and yet not rushing. Out of the grasp of D. Webb, but into the end zone. Let's find out where they rule he stepped out. Mark Tressman was concerned about Thigpen's returns today, and they have been a factor for 
setting up Kevin Plant with great field position throughout. Well, that's huge. And that that's a, a big run. Kevin Glenn now three first downs away from a field goal. Does not have to deviate from his game plan at all. Kahari Jones can keep Avon Colburn involved and success on first down. The next three plays, three or four first downs here are huge. three yard line so that's close to Medlock Range a 21 yard pickup and a reminder following this Eastern semi we will head to Commonwealth Stadium Battle of Alberta John Cornish and the Calgary Stampeders beating the Eskimos Bakari Grant has arrived in this semi-final game Chris big blocks in the running game big catches I'm bigger than that last one for Medlock, trying to chew up some yards. A tap on the back as Coburn went through after the handoff. Down inside the 39. Before we get too far ahead here, Anthony Calvillo, over 500 yards passing. That's the second most in playoff history. The most by a Hamilton Tiger Cat, Tony Curcillo, back in 1956. Show you that catch by Bakari Grant one more time. It's crunch time. Comes back to the ball, uses his hands. Strong hands over the middle. Ty Katz a first down away from what would be enough. They're going to keep him in the air. Williams the catch. Dragged down by Billy Parker. Stays in bounds at the 32. And Alouettes will stop the clock, I believe. And there's really no reason, would you think, for the Ticats to put the ball in the air again? Just wondering why, Chris, the ball went back to the 40-yard line in the original line of scrimmage. I, I think the, the officials may have blown this play dead. Wow. Timeout, Hamilton. Now the Timer. Cats take a timeout. Please reset the clock to read 42 seconds, please. No, they've got two on the clock. They've got the ball. Well, you're right. They've got the ball marked second down at the 40. So that play did not take place. In the din here. Ticats not perturbed by it. The crowd noise may have drowned the, the whistle by the officials, and that play didn't count. There have been four lead changes in the game. Four times the game's been tied. And they put it back to 42 seconds. Second down and six. And a ball and it is a first down and a clutch one by the kid who really has bounced back here in the second half. It's a great story. The first throw of the game to Chris Williams. He dropped. It was a deep one. And it took him a whole quarter to come back Montreal. and get his confidence back. But in crunch time, when they absolutely had to have that first down, he goes one-on-one -on, -one on Seth Williams on the backside. And Williams can't cover him much tighter and comes up with a big catch. Now that takes and gives the Hamilton Tiger Cats a chance to run this clock down before they go for the game-winning field goal and not give Anthony Calvillo any time after Justin Medlock attempts it. 